you'll actually get your hands dirty in writing an ODE solver. You'll write forward Euler and backward Euler. Forward Euler is also very commonly called explicit Euler because it's an explicit solver. We will then use the explicit Euler solver we wrote to generate trajectories of the simple harmonic oscillator for different parameter sets. Here's my MATLAB implementation of forward Euler. It takes an initial condition x0, a step size h, a final time, and the show plot parameter, which I just need later on as a flag whether or not to plot the trajectories. You can pretty much just ignore this one if you need to. The first step is just to make x current, which is a helper variable, equal to the initial condition, and make x0 the first element in the trajectory. Notice that since MATLAB starts array indexing with 1, x0 will actually be the first element in the trajectory. That is, x0 will be trajectory 1. So x1 will be trajectory 2. These off by 1 errors can often be very confusing. We then just have this main loop. All it does is takes x current, which is that helper variable that we used above, starts from that position, and takes one step in the direction of the differential equation. So the next element in the trajectory is simply the current position plus a tiny step in the direction of the ODE. We then update x current and loop for as many times as we need to get to the final time. We then may or may not plot the trajectory depending on that show plot parameter. The simple harmonic oscillator is given by these two differential equations and have three parameters, k, m, and beta. We then calculate x prime based on these differential equations, evaluate it at x current, and return x prime. It's always a good idea when you write new software to desk check the software. That means to do the first iteration by hand and make sure that what you got by hand is what you get through the software. We use Ford Euler to solve the simple harmonic oscillator for one time step using a time step of 0.1 starting at negative 1, negative 2. And if we do that, we see that we get negative 1.2 and negative 1.6, which is precisely what we got during the desk check. So I would say that our software is good to go. The first problem is to generate a trajectory for 0.5 seconds starting at k equals 2, m equals 0.5, and beta equals 0 from the initial condition negative 1, negative 2, and see what we get. So starting from initial condition negative 1, negative 2, using a step size of 0.1, and going to time, or final time, 0.5, and in this case we will not plot the final trajectory, we get that the last point in the trajectory, or the trajectory at time 0.5 using this solver, is position negative 1.5283 and velocity 0.6246. That is the answer to question 1a. For B, we want to keep all the parameters the same and the same initial condition. We want to generate a 200-point trajectory instead of a 5-point trajectory. And we'll generate this trajectory using a time step of 0.1 as well as a time step of 0.11. If we do this, we get the following plot. In this plot, the blue curve is generated using a time step of 0.1, and the red curve is using a time step of 0.11. As you can see, and as we would expect in the lecture, the red curve spirals out faster. That is, if you take a bigger time step, you're going to step farther off the trajectory, and in this case, you'll spiral out faster. See the lecture for a very nice visualization of this. From this plot, we could see that using the delta t of 0.11 spiraled out faster. Question 2 asks to write backward Euler. This is also called implicit Euler as it is an implicit solver. My implementation is a MATLAB implementation that takes the exact same inputs as forward Euler did, namely an initial condition, a step size, a final time, and this plot parameter. My backward Euler code is identical to my forward Euler code, except for this one key step. Remember, with an implicit solver, you approximate the next step, and then you use that as your current guess. So in the case of backward Euler, this line is identical, except for instead of evaluating the simple harmonic oscillator at x current, you use x current to do a forward Euler step, save that, and then you update the trajectory by using the slope at the forward Euler step. This can be a little bit confusing, but you're approximating a step into the future, pulling the direction at that new step back in time, and then using the direction at the new step to go forward in time. Liz provided a really nice visualization of what's happening here in the lecture, and if you're confused about this, I encourage you to go back and see that. Question 2. Part A asks us to find what x at time 0.5 would be, using a time step of 0.1 starting at negative 1, negative 2, using a backwards Euler solver. If we do this, we see that x at time 0.5 will be negative 1.2451, and the velocity will be 0.6136. This is precisely the answer to question 2a. Question 2b asks us to repeat problem 1b, but instead using the backward Euler solver we just created. Again, in this plot, the blue trajectory uses a step size of 0.1, and the red trajectory uses a step size of 0.11.
As we would expect, the red trajectory using a larger step size spirals in faster. So this is the answer to question 2b. The delta t of 0.11 spirals in faster than using a time step of 0.1. Problem 2c asks us to use both a forward and backward Euler solver using a time step of 0.1 to generate two 50-point trajectories and plot them both together to see what the difference is. Here is that plot. The blue uses backward Euler, and the red uses forward Euler. Clearly the difference here is that one is spiraling in, and one is spiraling out. This should not be surprising from what we just did. What's interesting here is this is an undamped simple harmonic oscillator, yet one of these is growing in amplitude, and one is just shrinking in amplitude. So the numerical solver is introducing dynamics that don't actually exist. But all we need to know for this problem is that the difference between these two is that one is spiraling in, and one is spiraling out. And this is the answer to question 2c. For this homework, the first question is to write an implementation of the so-called trapezoidal method, which is a second-order implicit Runge-Kutta method. This method is effectively averaging a forward Euler step and a backward Euler step. While generally, both backward and forward Euler provide a lot of error, trapezoidal does a little bit better. As some of you may have noticed, it is called trapezoidal method due to its similarities with the trapezoidal integration method you learned in calculus. Here's my MATLAB implementation of the trapezoidal method. As inputs, it takes an initial condition, a step size, and a final time. Functionally, this code is very similar to both backward and forward Euler, it's just what we do with each step. In particular, this line right here. This takes the average of a forward Euler step and a backward Euler step. Notice that we have to do a forward Euler step to get x at the next time step in order to see the slope there. This is very common in implicit methods. Notice that while this line of code is just simply the code for forward Euler. I could have just as easily just called the forward Euler implementation that I wrote for a previous homework. Below the trapezoidal code, for completeness, I provide the simple harmonic oscillator code as well. Note that k equals 2, m equals 0 0.5, and beta equals 0 are the parameters that we will use throughout this homework. Part A asks us to find what x and b will be at time 0 0.5, starting from negative 1, negative 2, using a time step of h equals 0 0.1, and the given parameters. If we do this experiment, using the code I just showed, you get x equals negative 1.3811 and v equals 0 0.6211 at time 0 0.5. For part b, we need to generate a 500 point trajectory of the same ODE system with the time step of 0 0.01 and see which of the following describes the trajectory best. This plot is precisely that trajectory, and as you can see, an ellipse is a good description of this. For part c, we're supposed to keep in mind that there's no damping in the system, that is that friction is equal to zero, and decide whether the trajectories you generated with forward and backward Euler in homework 5.4 are more accurate or less accurate than the trajectory you generate with the trapezoidal method. I think the best way to approach this is to simply plot all three on the same plot. If we do that, we get this plot. All three trajectories started at this point. The blue trajectory is backward Euler, and it quickly spirals into the origin. The red trajectory is trapezoidal, and it does the elliptical pattern it should, and the green trajectory is forward Euler and spirals out very quickly. So from this picture, it does seem that the trapezoidal method is providing a more accurate solution or a better trajectory for these dynamics. You can actually formally prove that the trapezoidal method is order h cubed locally, whereas backward and forward Euler are both order h squared. So the red really is a better representation of the trajectory. For parts d and e, we need to generate a 5,000 point trajectory of the same ODE system and the same initial conditions using a time step of 0 0.01, as we did in part b. And we want to see if there's a difference qualitatively between this plot and the plot using 500 points. Describe that difference if there is one. And if there was a difference, we need to try to diagnose that difference. In this plot, I have plotted both the 500 point trajectory in red and the 5000 point trajectory in blue. As you can see, the trajectory has slightly fattened. That is, the trajectory has gotten a little bit wider and takes up a little bit more of phase space. What's happening here is that the numerical error caused in the trapezoidal method, while much, much smaller than either forward or backward Euler, still exists. This numerical error is violating the conservation of energy properties of a simple harmonic oscillator with no friction. And since the system is a conservative system, a symplectic integrator should be used, or some type of integrator that conserves energy. You can see that this problem where energy is either being gained or lost in the system, persists even for RK4 and RK5. What this should show you is that while RK4 is the go-to workhorse in dynamical systems, it's not appropriate for every dynamical system. Even a simple system like the simple harmonic oscillator with no damping can give RK4 grief. Just because you have order h to the fourth global error propagation doesn't mean you'll get accurate solutions, especially in the cases where special properties need to be preserved, such as conservation of energy. This is something to be aware of and a reason to know how to code up an ODE solver and not just use the 
out of the box method that comes with Mathematica or MATLAB or NumPy, for example. So the answer to question D is that the trajectory fattened, taking up more space. And the answer to question E was that the numerical error is violating the conservation of energy property of a simple harmonic oscillator with beta equals zero. Since the system is a conservative system, a symplectic integrator should have been used.